What was the most surprising thing that you got out of that Investor's Day? Well, I thought there were four big takeaways. One is that we've got a great franchise, and that we went through the four businesses. Mm -hmm. Number two, that all four of those businesses are not just growing share, but they're growing profitability as well. Number three, we're going to make a ton of money over the next three years. We're going to go from $22 billion to $30 billion. And number four, we're going to pay 65 to 75 percent of that out to shareholders in the form of either common stock dividends or share repurchase. Uh, you know, on the on the returns to shareholders, though, I mean, he did note uh, very early on in the Investor's Day in the slides that the return on equity on some parts of the business was going to be lower, right, on corporate investment banking. Uh, it is going to be lower. I mean, that's a new reality, though, for shareholders who invest in big banks like J.P. Morgan, right? Right. Well, the, the reason it's going to be lower is because the regulators are requiring a lot more capital for the company. Right, to hold, yes. And then they distribute that capital to the individual lines of business. So are you still of the stance, Tom, that... Banks are holding too much capital. Do you still hate the regulators for that? Uh, more today than ever, Betty. <laughs> the, the, I mean, when you take a look at J.P. Morgan, one of the other things that came through yesterday was you may think of us as complex, but based on all the capital that we have and all the diverse lines of business, we are less risky. So I, I think that, that there's a, this neat distinction needs Why? to be Why? Because made. they got rid of prop trading? They, no, because they, they have so many lines of business and they're so profitable. So if one line of business blew up, and the, and the, the London Whale is a good example of that. So they, they, they lose billions of dollars, and yet they still have a record year. So I, I think we need to separate complexity with risk. But couldn't you have made that same argument, Tom, before the 2008 financial crisis? Couldn't you have made that same argument? Well, I think, I think we did. If you look at, at, at who survived, so Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, they all bought companies that fail. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that the largest banks, with the exception of Citi, Citi was the one bank that was structured poorly going into the crisis. Right. But and coming then, out of the crisis, was revealed. we've got the safest banking system in the world. Now, this was interesting. Jamie Dimon, who in his investor uh, call in January, came out lashing against the regulators. Remember, he almost called it pretty much un-American mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to, uh, 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 to be putting so much regulation on these banks. He was a little bit more even-toned yesterday. Uh, in fact, he was saying, look, uh, regulation is going to make it better for the industry. He thinks the regulatory uncertainty is going to lift in about two years. What did you make of that, Tom? I was a little surprised by it, but, yeah. but it's not inconsistent with him. He, you know, he, he'll go through periods where he, he rails on the regulators, and then he recognizes that we're, we are moving. Well, maybe he it, gets a phone call afterwards. He, he, <laughs> he, he might get a phone call, but uh, at least to, to Jamie, uh, if you talk to any of these CEOs privately, there's, uh, they will just tell you this is the this is the toughest environment that they've ever seen. It's not constructive uh, to the uh, to the U.S. economy. Uh, the other thing he he said that struck me was also about the stock and the valuation. He said investors are not appropriately valuing the stock of J.P. Morgan. You would agree? Have you ever seen a CEO that said our stock is fairly valued? <laughs> I, I, I haven't met one yet. Is it is it the legal discount? Is it the legal fee discount? It, that's that's what that's what we're talking about here. I think it's the uncertainty, frankly, because we don't we don't even know the final capital rules so that they won't come out until the end of this year right now we have still not written almost uh, half of the requirements under Dodd-Frank so I think there's a large bank discount based on uncertainty but is there also a discount based on further legal fees to be to be paid I mean the billions of dollars in settlements that have already been paid Tom uh, what more is out there right what's under the cover yeah well I think that $35 billion after tax of legal fees that have already been paid. I, I feel confident that over the next five years, whatever shows up, whatever new scandal you can come up with here, the, the fees will be and the legal costs will be less than $35 billion. So I, I think we're on the downside of that model. So we've hit the peak then. Yeah. Peak legal fees peak is, my, is my, what, we, what we might call it. And reserves, yes. And reserves.